Welcome to Kakaki Sports. I am Timbe Shima. On this segment, we'll be looking at the post-match analysis of the Super Eagles in their last AFCON qualification game against Sao Tome and Principe in Uyo Aquaibon State, where they defeated the visitors 6-0, and then that was a massive win for the Super Eagles. They have actually qualified to the next round of the competition. The real tournament, I, mean, I beg your pardon, and that will be taking place in Ivory Coast come January 2024. But this morning, joining me to discuss the post-match analysis of that particular encounter is a sports analyst and um, a journalist also in person of Pius, the Pius. Welcome to Kakaki Sports. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be on, Kaka, on Kakaki this morning. All right. So, Pius, quickly, you watched the game. You were live at the stadium. You saw uh, how the Super Eagles merged victorious against the visitors for their second leg, for the final game of the encounter. Yeah. Let's start with the formation. Um, for you, um, that formation, would you say mm. it was expected as a 4-4-2 formation from the Super Zero? And then the starting 11, mm. I mean, was it something like expected? Oh, most definitely. I think um, Super Zero is always a 4-4-2 kind of a coach. Um, he always prefers the diamond formation um, rather than playing um, uh, maybe a, a, a three five two or even a four three three formation Jose Pesero is very typical of playing the diamond formation I wasn't really surprised and um, I think I don't think maybe the little surprise for me was the fact that the new players some of the new players invited into the team I thought probably because it's a dead rubber game they will actually be, gi gi be given the opportunity to you know show Nigerians what they've got the likes of uh, um, Tonaru, uh, yeah, Boniface, Boniface actually eventually, yeah, yeah, he got his debut. Um, I was actually thinking that, uh, Jordan. yeah, Jordan, Tonaruga, and um, uh, Gift Oban. Gift Oban. We, we understand he was injured at some point, so probably that, that's the reason why he couldn't, you know, make the the, the match the uh, list eventually. He couldn't even sit, sit on the bench. So I, I just want to believe that um, Ose Pesero believes in this diamond formation so much and I don't think he's ready uh, to trade it for any other formation because that is what has actually been giving him results mm. in most of the matches that he has uh, played for the Super Eagles this makes it the tenth game mm. uh, look looking at all the previous the previous other games he has actually played you will agree with me that he has always played more of uh, the diamond formation than any other formation so I wasn't surprised about it that he decided to come up with that formation once again and of course um, it, it actually panned out gave well. Him it gave him right, results. So, but let's now talk about the results. Six nil. I mean, that's a lot of goals. Quite okay, but not compared to the first, the reverse picture that they played. You know, um, away from home, ten nil, mm -hmm. and then playing at home, six nil against Southern and Principe. For you, was that more or less a downgrade or an upgrade? Looking <laughs> at the squad we have. <laughs> Anyways, uh, a lot of people actually thought that um, because we defeated South Tobi ten zero away from home in Agadi in Morocco to be precise. Maybe a lot of people are thinking that here in Nigeria uh, they should receive the back 20, of their life. They should, they should double. Yes, they thought uh, the Eagles will double that score. But unfortunately, f football is not like that. Football writes its own script. Um, you sometimes um, what you least expect can actually spring up at any time. Yes. And I think that was the kind of surprise that uh, Sao Tome came up with. Remember during their press conference when they arrived, they promised that they are coming to trash Nigeria, mm -hmm. even though they got the bash in any ways. <laughs> they dreamt they were going to trash Nigeria. Yes. Um, I think it was just overboard for them. But regardless, 6-0, um, it's, it, it's not a bad result, judging from what the Eagles played against them away from home yeah the, the fans actually enjoyed it because the goals came mm. if it was like maybe one zero it two zero yeah it would have been disappointing for the home fans yeah, you could yeah. see how you know they turned out they were cheering them they, they wanted the eagles to keep scoring mm. to keep scoring mm. as a matter of fact some even said they want to see 24 goals uh, I, I mean <laughs> that doesn't happen in modern day football yes, yes, so yes. a child that you beat today tomorrow don't expect that you can still beat, beat that child, child again, again. And the post-match conference, I could hear one of the players also saying 
that they are growing. They are, this is a team that is evolving. Exactly. And exactly. They, they can't always be that team that every team will just come and, you know, just um, Make take them. Talk. Yes, take them for a ride, have a stroll in the park against them and all of that. Um, it doesn't happen. So they are, they are coming up mm -hmm. and I like the fact that um, they are actually making progress. Because yeah. for me, I think this is progress they've on made. Their, on their path. Yes, on, on their, their path. path. This is progress and they've this is made. A good result for it's, us. it's a good result, actually. So, all right. Um, so that, now just taking with the result and staying with the goals, mm -hmm. um, which of the goals did it for you? I mean, I know Simon opened the opener 15 minutes into playtime. Mm -hmm. And then shortly after that, um, Ademola Lukman, 15 minutes later, his fellow Syria counterpart. That's right. Yeah, doubled the lead for Nigeria. So, mm. which of the goals made it for you? Because personally, that it was the goal of Taiwa Wani. Not because I'm a huge fan, yeah. but that goal was <laughs> epic. That was a Absol clinical ab finish. Ab absolutely, absolutely. That was a masterclass for me. Taiwa Wani, Taiwa Awoni's goal stood out for me. Um, why I said that? Because not so many strikers can actually score that kind of goal. Yeah, chest because, control. And yes, chest control. Context. Even in the midst of a packed defense, he was able to keep his confidence. his confidence. Yes, he kept his cool and then buried it nicely. I think Taiwa Wuni's goal stood out for me. Um, the goal that uh, Kelechi Henacho, uh, rather and, uh, Victor, Victor Simen scored, perfect, nice goals as well. So, the, kudos to the Super Eagles. They actually showed that. Going to next year's the Nations Cup, um, no team should take them for granted. Underrated, no, right. no team should underrate the Super Eagles because yeah. you will only be doing that at your own peril. Detriment. All right, that's a good place to land. Keep it there. You will only be doing that at your own detriment if you underrate the Super Eagles going into the AFCON, where they'll be hoping to pick their fourth AFCON title. So away from the AFCON qualifiers, I mean, in the same period where they're getting ready for the AFCON. In fact, in, in, in precisely the yeah. African tournament, precisely which is taking on uh, taking place in Ivory Coast sometime yeah. in January, mm. they will also be involved in the FIFA um, uh, qualification, yes. 2026 qualification, That's and right. their first game is in November, and we've been we've been hinted that to be played here in Rio. Mm. So for you, do you see anything? I mean, this year's making it past the group stage or even getting into a qualification ticket. Most definitely, I want to believe that uh, the the present Super Eagles squad we have. Um, they do have the wherewithal to go all the way to secure the ticket. Um, we are in a group uh, with the likes of South Africa, uh -huh. Rwanda, uh, Le 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 Lesotho. Mm -hmm. Do we also have Zimbabwe, but we have a, a Benin Republic Bene in that yeah. group. Yeah, some people might just say mm, South Africa and the other one. They might give us Actually, a bit of headache. That group. Yes. Like the Super Eagles are the only chance. South Africa is not even the team to look out for in that group. For me, I think it's going to be Rwanda and probably maybe Zimbabwe and Benin Republic. There will be a hard knot to crack for the Eagles. But regardless, um, with the present NFF, with the support they are giving to the team, uh -huh. the present NFF under the leadership of well, uh, Ibrahim, yeah, Al Haji Ibrahim Musa Guso, he said it during the AGM. That come what me, they will go all the way to ensure that Nigeria qualified. The pains of losing out to Ghana, not qualifying um, for yeah, the last just, yeah, World, World Cup, Cup in Qatar. Yeah. I mean, it's still fresh on the minds mm -hmm, of the players mm -hmm. and the administrators, mm -hmm. and they want to correct that. They, they want to correct their wrongs. Alaji Guso has promised he's going to support the team, and I equally want to believe that the players, with the crop of players we have right now at our disposal. As our disposal, I don't think we should struggle to qualify for the Nations Cup, regardless of any team we've been paired with in that group. The Super Eagles should come out of that group. They should come out of that group, not even struggling. They should qualify, maybe with two or three games to spare, judging from the quality of players that we have in this team right now. I know when you're talking about quality of players, your, your emphasis, are being, even if you're not saying it, yeah. have been laid on the front line because you have <laughs> an amazing set of, you know, of right. course, forward men mm -hmm. in the current Super Eagles squad. But let's talk about the back line. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have made complaints about the back line as the defenders. I know we have the likes of Captain Truste come there, Kami yeah. Bassi doing very well in Fulham. Mm -hmm. He did very well in Ajax, now he's in Fulham. Do you also share that thought that it's something we need to build on going into bigger tournaments, mm. so particularly the black back line and maybe the midfield? Well, um, your defense is as good as your attack, yeah. So I do agree with you that we need depth in the defense, in, in, in our defensive setup. 